Good afternoon. Happy Monday. Um, I hope everyone has had a fantabulous weekend. Um, today is International Self Care Day, and um, I do a lot of self care uh, in my groups, but I, like probably many of you, uh, need to be a little bit better in exercising the first part of that word, which is self. So today, uh, the focus is um, international. If, if, if anyone is joining me today, um, I just want to do a quick check and make sure I am running live on Facebook. And it appears that I am. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to shut this down. Um, if you're joining me today uh, and the term self-care is, is somewhat foreign to you, uh, is probably not something that you're exercising on a regular basis. And International Self-Care Day is about the importance of loving oneself uh, and, and taking care of that mind-body balance. And, um, you know, they're, 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 a lot of times we talk about they're interconnected and one affects the other, like they're two separate entities. But your mind is a part of your physical body and... Um, your mood, your feelings, uh, your emotions, your thought process, uh, what you believe in um, can very much be altered by just your biology and, and chemistry that's going on in your body. So um, self-care is, 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 you know, a, a big thing in my world um, in, in the, the, the coaching I support with the vibration plates. Uh, today, we're going to talk about my top three self-care kind of categories of, of technology that I, I think you should consider. Self-care is something, you know, maybe you're dealing with a medical condition, maybe you've got a really stressful job. Self-care means different things to different people. So, um, you know, what, why am I recommending? What are the, the top three? Um, because I, I kind of looked at today as, as what's most versatile, what's going to fit into the most realm of use for, for everybody joining me today. Uh, some technologies, perhaps you're, you're dealing with a medical condition or contraindication or, or there are certain things that you've been advised against. Today, I wanted to play in the wheelhouse of things that most people can not only benefit from, but use themselves. And uh, I'm going to dispel a few myths with, with some of the self-care, um, just discussions that you may be coming across uh, on the internet. Self-care starts with you. And if you've joined me in any of my, my medical sessions, I, I always talk about how um, you don't need a diagnosis to start self-care. Self-care might mean diet. It might be mean getting some, some activity under your belt. It might be doing some recovery or some downtime and some healing. So depending on, on what your life presents, what your nine to five looks like, um, I, I want you to hopefully from today going forward, Take baby steps towards, you know, be a little selfish. Start loving yourself more, investing time in this vessel. This is the thing that goes to work every day. This is what feeds your kids. This is what mows the lawn. And if, if you're not taking care of the body-mind uh, relationship, you might start not only getting um, physical illnesses, but mental illnesses. You might be depressed. You might have poor sleep. Um, you might be, yeah, suffer from anxiety. So there's all kinds of, of different things we can do physically. And even if you're not physically able, um, you know, maybe you are dealing with a medical issue. You're not able to stand for long periods. Maybe you suffer from fatigue. Um, self-care does not mean working out. I want to say that right here, right now. I want to make sure I'm not having any technical issues on my end. Uh, hello, whoever is joining me today. Um, I see that I have one of you here joining me. Uh, I will uh, get into a little bit of a demonstration on some of the products here, the benefits. And then I just want to make sure that if anyone does have questions, uh, that you know I am here to answer those for you today. Uh, it is um, Monday. Uh, today, I simply want to get you motivated to start caring for your uh, self-care is very much like exercise to a degree, not in the fact that it's hard or something I want you to be moaning and groaning about, but it is something that needs to be performed consistently. So today I want you to think about keeping it simple, keeping it short and sweet, and, and hopefully, um, oh, I might be having some connection issues. 
Um, if, if you are having trouble seeing or hearing me on the other end, let me know. Um, but I'm going to get started with um, kind of a big category. Um, of course, my, my favorite tool to use always uh, for everything where possible is a vibration plate. But I wanted to talk today more uh, encompassing because it is International Self-Care Day um, and, and speak more generally about vibration. So there's all kinds of terms out there, vibration exercise, vibration therapy, and they do have different meanings, but more importantly, they have different applications. It really depends on what you're doing with them. Um, and, it, and it really depends on what, what you're trying to accomplish. Sometimes we have short-term goals where maybe you got like a bad ankle or a bad knee or you're dealing with something that you need to address short term before we can get to long term. So three examples um, of vibration, let's call them self-care tools. Uh, you know, maybe you're using them for therapy, recovery, whatever your purpose for using them. Um, a vibration plate uh, in, in the vibration therapy exercise world, uh, it, it can be both. It's a bit of a crossover. A vibration plate is an environment. It is an environment that you can exercise on. Um, you're going to get some passive benefits by standing on the surface of the plate because you're bearing your body weight. Other vibrational tools like a, like a foot massager. I love my VibraCare. When I'm lazy, I'm like super lazy. And, and that's usually on the couch watching a movie or, or some silly zombie show that I've recorded. Uh, and, and I like to work my feet specifically um, because I tend to overdo things and, and use them too much. And if I, if I have achiness or soreness, uh, after a big day, it's usually the feet, uh, and then a massage gun. So a massage gun, uh, does not have the same benefits as a vibration machine. A foot massager does not have the same benefits. It has similar, but there's different applications. So any of these vibrational tools, and to be honest, any of the self-care tools I'm talking about today are going to do two very important things. They're going to increase your circulation and they're going to increase your lymphatic movement. Why are those things important? Well, an increase in circulation is, is something many of you are looking for for a variety of reasons. Same with the lymphatic movement. But more importantly, it's, it's going to get things moving, whether you're just doing a, a therapeutic thing or you're maybe you're prepping before you go to the gym, recovery after you've done some therapy. Good circulation and good lymph. Also, an increase in those things oxygenates the blood. It helps expedite toxins out of our body. It goes a long way uh, to, to improving the, the overall health of your body, be it mental, physical, or both. So if, if you find that you're in an overly active job, maybe you're in an overly inactive job, you know, usually just getting a little bit of movement going, uh, especially if you've got chronic issues in a localized area, maybe some carpal tunnel going on, some sciatic, any of these tools, once you understand how to use them effectively, can be your feel good as well as uh, recovery, uh, it, you know, to, in complement with other things that you're doing. The vibration machine brings a little bit more to the equation, being that it is an environment that you can stand on. I'm not saying everyone is able to. There's lots of ways you can modify use for your self-care. Just make sure you're finding something that works for you, your goals, short and long term. And a vibration machine, if you're able to bear weight, or perhaps you need to do a combination of standing and seated for whatever reason, um, it's going to go a little further in maintaining and building stronger bones. A lot of you are very conscious about bone health. Uh, and sometimes your bone health deteriorates due to treatments or interventions that you've had to take in the course of your life as well. Uh, the massage gun is, is a great portable option. If you find you're not at home during the day or you're away for extended periods and it's, it's hard to haul a plate around with you or a foot massager, this is a great way to kind of hit those local areas. You can do total body. It just takes a little bit longer. Um, this is somewhat portable. What I like about the massager, if you, if you uh, the foot massager and the massage gun, if you're in an office situation or you just find you're in a work home environment and you're seated lots and you need that circulation in the lower body, um, these are good options. You know, you can hit your feet for a minute or two or you can just place something like this under your desk as opposed to that ergonomic option that does nothing. So vibration goes a long way. Um, if, if, if you're not using vibration uh, in any way, shape or form right now, 
Uh, perhaps you're fearful. Perhaps you're uninformed. Uh, there, there's a little bit of misunderstanding uh, when it comes to the health and wellness benefits of vibration, especially for self-care. Uh, there is a difference between industrial exposure, you know, in your workplace to vibration that can actually long term over long periods of, of long daily use and very different settings than the devices we're talking about today can cause detrimental effects. You know, you can get all kinds of arthritis buildup, low back pain. So sometimes people get shied away from vibration because we think, well, how can I use this, the same thing to fix what created the problem? So in uh, what's referred to as ISO guidelines, and I'll drop some links uh, after the uh, session is, is in the recorded state. Um, ISO guidelines are things in your workplace, in your lunchroom that regulate occupational safety standards. And, and there's a number of, you know, anything from loading a dishwasher to mopping floors. Um, there's a whole book about this thick of occupational standards. And one of those is vibration. There's people that work with things like tampers and jackhammers, or maybe you just drive uh, in, in trucks. You know, it's, it's long periods of continuous exposure over years and years that sometimes can have detrimental effects versus, you know, just boosting some circulation and using, you know, for minimal uh, short-term care versus long-term exposure. That's usually the risk with any devices out there is overdoing it. Just like no different than going to the gym. You know, what's the worst you're going to do at the gym is you're going to overdo it and you're going to be sore the next day. But hopefully you learn from that and modify based on what might work best for you. <clears throat> so my next uh, self-care tool that I wanted to focus on is also kind of a combo. So my, my number one tool is a vibration machine, uh, but I wanted to encompass other things uh, because of the vet benefits with vibration. My number two self-care tool, um, and probably not me personally, but through my observation and working with my groups, probably the most used tool of all the things I talk about uh, in, in the uh, vibration machine world besides the plate itself is the gun. Uh, for those of you that are dealing with chronic issues, swelling, um, you know, you want to manage symptoms throughout the course of the day, you're a gym goer and, and you just don't want to suck up the pain anymore. There's lots of ways that a massage gun can fill the void uh, between therapeutic treatments. You know, we don't all have money to go see the physical therapist or the chiropractor weekly, as nice as that would be. Um, but if you can manage symptoms throughout the course of the day, it's going to help with the mental health. It's going to help with the physical symptoms. And then by the time the end of your day comes, you might feel and move better so that you're not in a situation where you don't do anything. So this is a really good ongoing throughout the day self-care tool. Uh, so that would be number one. That would be number two. My number three fave self-care tool is... I'm going to see the bigger category of light therapy, but specifically infrared. I have been using infrared therapy probably as long, if not longer than I have vibration plates. It's the first thing I incorporated in my studio 15 odd years ago. Um, my husband and I live in, in a colder area of the world up in Canada and saunas were popular, but it wasn't until I was doing my own research on infrared specifically that I really started to realize um, some of the benefits that I can offer my customers in that studio environment. Um, you know what I haven't done today is I haven't turned on any lights. I'm looking so dark. Yeah, that's a little bit better. My apologies. I'm not, I'm not sparkling at all today. Um, this is the uh, infrared sauna, red light, the infrared dome from Life Pro. I've also got a bio heal panel in here and I've got a bio remedy blanket. So uh, part of the reason I like to show you different tools is it really depends on how you're going to be applying your self-care tools for your personal situation. So there is some variety here. What I want you to be realistic with in the vibration as well as the light therapies I'm going to talk about next. Be realistic. You know, what are you actually going to use? What are you actually going to do? I I would prefer that you use something more consistently even if it's in a passive way, then, you know, buy something with the best of intentions and only be using it a couple, three times a year. You're not going to get the benefit and you're not going to get the overall self-care boosts that, that you could be. So what I like about infrared technology for me personally, um, and, and lay down saunas and infrared blankets are my favorite things, especially seasonally, 
even sometimes in the summer, I'm very high energy and I've always got something to do and I've always got a reason to be there or go there is it kind of forces me to just stop for at least a period of time while I'm in the sauna, uh, while I'm in the blanket. The blanket is a really cool travel option or it's a really cool option for those of you that don't have the real estate or the budget to commit to a larger device. So infrared, red light, what's the difference? Okay, so for those of you that haven't seen at least one of the several sessions we've done here for you, um, I always have something new to say. I always have a new opinion. So this is a panel. The panel is gonna offer either red light, infrared, or a combination. This is specifically just infrared. And if, if I had to give you a really simple tip is, you know, what's the difference? Visible light, vis whatever the color is, whether it's red, gray, green, blue, purple, there's, there's all kinds of benefits to the spectrum of the sun's light, the rainbow that we know of colors. And there's different benefits based on the wavelengths of those different colors. But a good rule of thumb with light therapy is, is if you can see it, it's surface. Surface, see it. So typically, um, the red light in the dome or the panels that you're going to be visually able to see, if you're looking at it directly, of course, we recommend protective eyewear. Um, but it's, it's, it's going to be more on the skin surface, skin lesions. Perhaps you're, you're dealing with, with a chronic pain condition. Maybe you're dealing with lupus. There's all kinds of different reasons that we have skin surface problems. It might just even be acne. Um, the, the infrared, infrared goes a little bit deeper. Infrared's that, that warm hug that you feel when you get inside your car on a sunny but cold day. Uh, you can feel the radiant warmth coming through the windshield that warms up the interior of the car. Infrared is that warmth that you feel. And it penetrates a little bit deeper below the skin surface. So uh, if we're looking specifically just at lymphatic and circulation, either light therapy is going to be good at that piece. But the, the infrared goes a little bit deeper. It's going to help uh, more effectively with that joint pain, swelling, uh, chronic healing, scar tissues. You know, if you've got deep muscular tension after the gym, um, you can also use it as a warm up. You're going to be huffing and puffing a lot more if you do a sauna before you go to the gym, I assure you. Um, and mix it up. You know, if you're, bought, if, if, if you're a regular infrared user or, or light therapy and you've been using the same settings, same duration, same time of day for a long time, um, and, and you feel like you're, you're still maintaining and things are good, but you're not seeing the benefits, I'm going to raise self-care. Part of self-care isn't always dealing with chronic conditions. Maybe you want to lose some weight. Maybe you want to tone up a little bit. Self-care, as I said, means different things to different people. So for those of you that are using it for weight loss, you're, you're, you're pretty consistent and you're using it more regularly. But if, if you're finding you've kind of plateaued, you know, you're not decreasing those results, uh, but you want to take it to the next level, Take a break, kind of a rest and reset from any of your light therapies, your vibration, any therapy. If, if you find you're kind of just going through the maintenance phase and you haven't really mixed it up, you know, stop and take a break, you know, three to five days, you know, and return at either a different setting with your light therapies. Often, you know, you'll find when you get back in your, your infrared sauna or your blanket, you're sweating a lot quicker. You know, your body is adapted and used to the technology and it may not require you to spend as much time doing it. If you're doing it from a relaxation, you know, keeping you captive and shutting your mind down for, for a period of time like I do, um, I usually, you know, in sauna season, which is usually more towards the fall and winter, um, I'm probably three to four times a week for 15 to 20 minutes. If I'm having a really good session and I'm pushing it maybe half, 45 minutes, I've been doing these for 15 years. So like anything, you're going to condition to your technologies and, and how long you use them, how often you use them is really going to depend on you and the benefits you're hoping to accomplish. So if it's, if it's fitness and you're wanting to get stronger, you know, things like your vibration plate and using these uh, tools as recovery or warm up tools in, 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 in um, blah, blah, blah. complement are great ways to expedite, not the self, only the self care, uh, but to reduce the amount of time you spend doing all this stuff. Um, if you're, if you're out where you want to be and you're just sort of going through your maintenance phase or you're dealing with chronic issues and you just need to relax, you know, um, a longer session, more relaxing, 
um, you know, a longer massage, you know, using your foot massager more often. You know, there's, there is no black or white. There's no how often. Pay attention to how your body is responding to the technologies. If you're overdoing anything, you might feel a little fatigued and a little pooped out. Um, if you're dealing with chronic issues and, and fatigue is a concern now, start minimally and use the devices more often. You know, maybe use them a couple, three times a day for five to 10 minutes and until you can build and progress from there. So there's no black and white. You know, it's, it's like asking, well, how long am I going to use a vibration plate before I use 20 pounds? I don't know. I've, I've never met you. I don't know what you eat. I don't know what you're doing on it. Are you pushing yourself? Are you pushing to fatigue? So I don't want to sound a defeatist or, or, you know, but just start moving and feeling better. Self-care day is about the importance of loving yourself, not killing yourself at the gym. Although for you, some of you, that might be, you know, what really gets you moving. Exercise makes us feel better. It raises endorphins. You know, all this, we know all this research, but you know, sometimes exercise for medical reasons or an injury is not possible. And if you've got some of these tools or you've been considering them, again, it's not always about doing a big workout. Sometimes it's just about caring for this vessel and getting it prepared for what you do hope to do down the road. And, and sometimes, like I say, with the goals, there's short term things that you need to address to get to those long term goals. For those of you with chronic issues, do what you can when you can. Um, with your vibration plates, uh, the massagers with that burst of circulation, they're going to give you, you know, sometimes short durations are exactly what you need to boost energy. Same goes with your light therapies. If, if, if you deal with, with chronic fatigue, you know, um, lung function issues, think things where you're trying to build that cardio function, sometimes using it more often, just getting to the point of sweat without accelerating the heart rate too dramatically, too quickly, and then building from there. You know, it's not always about going 100 miles an hour for the full duration when you start these things out. And if you do overdo it, do it, you'll probably feel somewhat fatigued and maybe a little bit drained the next day. So make sure you're hydrating and make sure you're giving your body the, the essential nutrients and fuels so it can thrive in, in whatever you're expecting out of it. So um, again, physical and mental are not two separate entities. They're they're, you know, what they're, they're intertwined as, as part of this bigger system of our overall health. Um, again, my first self-care, you know, end all be all is, is a vibration plate. It can be feel good. It can be fitness. My number two would be a, a massage gun. Uh, there's a lot of self-care you can do throughout the course of the day on the go. Uh, and then my fave, uh, third item is in, is light therapies, infrared specifically, uh, lots of lots of options with Life Pro now. Um, way way more affordable and flexible than some of the things I got back into uh, a couple of decades ago myself. So um, if you have something specific that you're dealing with medically, I said at the beginning of the session, one of the reasons I leaned on some of the things I'm looking at today was there, there's less, let's say, contraindications. There, 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 it's more likely that most of you can use these technologies. Um, even with vibration plates, when you're doing things like exercise, um, I had a couple of clients this morning that assumed well, I can't use it because I just had surgery. Well, I don't know. What kind of surgery did you have? Are you, are you able to bear weight? Is it, is it your left elbow? Cause you can certainly put your feet on it still. So sometimes it's never a black and white answer. And I apologize for that. I know that's sometimes what we're looking for, but you're all unique and different. And sometimes uh, a little bit more information when you are asking questions, uh, allows me to give you a better answer in how you can apply these tools effectively. So there's always a way that you can modify how you use any of these tools to fit your personal situation and your personal self-care goals. So very cool. Um, International Self-Care Day did not call, fall on a Monday last year. So I'm excited to, to ramble with you a little bit today. I want to see if anyone there has any self-care questions or any questions specifically about some of the toys I was showing off today. Let me see who's here with me. Um, okay. Hello. Hello. Hello, Facebook user. I hope that I'm not still blurry. I was having a, a little thing pop up saying my internet was, was intermittent and then it was fine. So I hope things are better. Uh, picture is better now. I should have scrolled down a bit further. Hello, Miss Wilson. Uh, made it. It's a, uh, Kim is a big self girl, uh, self care girl. She's one of my guinea pigs and has probably tried 
uh, most of these at least once or twice. Uh, Self-care, um, something I, I wanted to kind of close with is, is, is certainly something that is a personal choice. Um, there's lots of ways that you can combine other therapies or, or disciplines that you're doing now, maybe classes you're taking, maybe you're doing aqua size, you know, there's never any one path to success. And sometimes variety, you know, leads to just the motivation you need to keep that consistent, you know, regular work going. Um, if you're dealing with a situation where you don't have a diagnosis, you know, most people don't. And, and there's also a lot of people dealing with a misdiagnosis. So it's it's important to pay attention to what your body is telling you. You know, if you've had some tricks that have worked in the past, sometimes, you know, your issues are like this. You know, um, sometimes our mental health is like this. And, you know, just consistently doing something for the betterment of your heart and soul every day uh, is going to take you further in the long run uh, to nurturing that relationship of mind, body, and spirit, if, if, if you want to take it to that direction, um, you know, I, I know that the more we don't move and, and the less that we invest time in ourselves today, uh, it, the, the more it's likely that we might be investing in a, in a bigger situation or, or, or issue down the road. So uh, you are only limited by your imagination and your range of motion. Uh, if you have some of these self-care tools and, and you're dealing with issues uh, that have cropped up or, or, or just have never really thought of some of the applications I discussed today, never hesitate to reach out. I am at Debbie with a Y. Um, if you do have a question, sometimes things get lost in the comments. So please make sure that you just comment. And if, if you are a big self-care person now, um, give yourself a, a, a pat on the back. You know, forming good habits early on are, are the, the best way I've seen to get that long-term success whether it's just for care, managing symptoms uh, and chronic things or fitness as well. So pick something, be realistic, guys. Pick something that you're going to stick with. If the goal is to get to fitness, but there's there's some lumps and bumps and pain in the way, you know, find something that, that you can manage, that you can afford, that you can do consistently to help you build and build forward in, in a positive direction towards those bigger goals. Thank you for joining me. Have a fantabulous Monday. Um, I have one more July session uh, next Monday that will run at the same time. I'm so sorry for the AM, PM typo thing on my part today. Uh, I will see you next week at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and I'm probably going to talk about some new technology that Life Pros come out with uh, that I've been excited to share and have been playing with. PEMF, PEMF. So uh, we'll do some talking about that next week. I want everybody to have a fantabulous week and enjoy your summer. Self-care, awareness day, do what you can. Just make sure you do it consistently. Thanks guys, have a great rest of your day.